Hello, hello. Welcome to Coffee Talk Tuesday. I'm here with my co-host back from his honeymoon, Trip Mitchell. Well, second honeymoon. Let's get it correct. A second honey. Second honeymoon? Yeah. So this was more of just an anniversary present then. This was, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll get it correct. It a, why did you call it a honeymoon then? I don't, we didn't go right after we got married, so, but we travel a lot and, you know, it's, it's tough being me. It is really, <laughs> yeah, really it, tough being you, getting back from Well, we're, we're a little concerned about the Europe, the two weeks in Europe this spring. We might not be able to go, so oh. we've got a backup. Right. Well, that's good. That's good. No, I know. It's tough. <laughs> right. <laughs> so how was Chris? Uh, did he do a good, did he let you talk? He let me talk way more than you ever let me talk. It was fun actually having him on the show. Well, um, <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, so I but, won't be. But, I mean, I did miss you. Okay, that, that is the correct answer. <laughs> so tell me about the show today. Well, I'm really excited that uh, Rodney is with us. Rodney Smith, he is, I have actually watched him for the last couple of years. The, the person that was on our show last week that you missed, Gary Williams, and he, uh, Rodney came into... They, they were doing this 50 states, really, uh, this this tour, I guess, along all 50 states. And I'll let him tell tell us more about it. But they stopped by here and visited one of my heart kids, and Trey. And I connected with Yuri because he was Spider-Man. But I've also been connected with Rodney ever since then. And he does amazing things as well. And I'm so excited for him to be able to get on and tell his story. And he's actually just started. You just started another tour, didn't you, Rodney? Yes, ma'am. So he just, so Rodney. Rodney, is that your corporate aircraft? Uh, what is that? The, like a small Learjet you're in? Yeah, he yeah, has a spaceship. Okay. <laughs> you look like you're doing, we're, we're stuck in a hot, sweaty studio in Salt Lake. And, Chalice has showered today, so it's all good. But you look like you're uh -huh. uh, you're, you're styling there. Where are you heading? California right now. Just just leaving um, Arizona. Fantastic. Who's your driver? Me. Wow. I I'm 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 very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm old, and so I'll preface this. And I've been in the TV business for a lot of years. Yes, sir. But do something like this 15 years ago would have cost thousands of dollars a oh, minute. Right. And now oh, we yeah, can, you're leaving Arizona on the way to California. We can do a live shot. Pretty awesome. The technology has come a <laughs> long <crazy>. way. <laughs> so right, tell us, tell <laughs> yes, us it what it is that you're doing right now. I'm on a 50 state tour for veterans. So this is my ninth 50 state tour. Um, Back in 2017, I came up with the idea to start traveling to all 50 states for my organization, Raising Men, and now Raising Women's Lone Care Service to make people aware of the organization. Then eventually I started moving for different causes, customizing lawnmowers for different causes. And now I have about five lawnmowers back here in my car. Um, a lawnmower spray painted for Purple Heart recipients, Gold Star family members, POWs, and the American flag. And... I was going around moving for veterans and peeled the, the groups that I just mentioned. And then after this 50 state tour, I will auction the lawnmowers off and give them to uh, charities associated with those groups. So I started this tour on Friday. So I'm, I'm about three days in and yeah, I'm making my way around the West Coast and Midwest and East Coast. Yeah, it's a, a great thing to be doing. How many miles do you ever look before you do a tour like this and go, my God, I'm going to be on the road for 50,000 miles or whatever it comes out to. Do you ever look at that? Um, I haven't recently, but for, for this tour, I took a picture of the mileage, mileage before I started. So when I finish, I can you know compare it. But it's, it's a lot of miles. And, yeah. well, Rodney, I have a car that has a lot of miles on it, and I realize it's all between Salt Lake and Vegas. So no one feels sorry for me in either accord. But, uh, <laughs> Vegas miles that, that, are That's about a six-hour drive, huh? Uh, six. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Vegas. That, that's where I stop all the time when I go to uh, Nevada. Okay. <laughs> Is it easy to – we are very cognizant lately about veterans and all they've done for us. 
when you get to a state and you do these things, do you find it's pretty easy to get people to help you out and get the media to cover you? Well, I, it's some states it's hard to find people, um, like especially like places like Nevada. It's hard to find loans because grass is grass is very rare there. Arizona was a little tricky. But, you know, it's, it's kind of easy. I just use social media to my advantage and make posts on social media. And that's how I'm able to find loans. Um, I'm not too focused on the media. If the media sees something on Twitter or something like that and they want to come out, they can come out. But my focus is just mainly on the people that I'm mowing for at that time on that tour. So he goes around and mows a lawn for a veteran in every single state. So and that, he goes and mows their lawn, and it's it's so awesome. You, I imagine you have some amazing stories. Do you have a couple that you could share with us of people and, and how you've impacted them? Yeah, so, you know, especially the veterans. I'm, I think the last time I done a 50-state tour for veterans was last last May, and, you know, I met a World War II veteran, and to hear his story firsthand, he, he remembers everything just like it was yesterday. And I felt like a little kid being told a story during story time. And there is a, there's so many people. I mean, it's so many people I can't even, you know, like pick them out. But it's just, it's just so many stories. And what we're doing is, you know, encouraging others to want to do the same in their city as well. And sadly, the World War II generation, mm -hmm. the, a lot of these men and, and women, for that matter, are in their 90s. And these stories... Yes are being lost and, you know, Korean war, war veterans as well. Yes. And Rodney, I had a chance to work with a gentleman who served in, in World War II, got out, started his family, and then had to go back in and oh, fight against man. Korea. And those stories are amazing. They so, really are. so my, my grandpa, so one of the reasons why I just admire and love what you're doing so much, and I, I love veterans and, and hearing their stories as well. My grandpa is 93 years old right now. And wow. last year I went to, to visit him, just me, because usually I'll take my kids every year. And last year I went just by myself and got to record him telling some of the stories because he's getting older. And so some things are getting fuzzy and everything like that. But I just, he was in World War II and Korean War and everything like that. He left on a tour to uh, Taiwan for a whole year went oh. from my and, and my my dad and my two uncles had to leave for, for an entire year during that time. So he's got some stories. So I just love hearing the stories as well. And so, yeah, I, I, I think it's important because like when I, when I interview every, you know, it doesn't matter the old veteran or young veteran, Everyone I talk to, um, I, I do a little interview with them. I think it's important that you get to hear their side and why they decided to serve and, and um, what it means to them to serve the country. So those types of stories are very important, especially with our older veterans that served in World War II and Vietnam and those, those eras. Yeah. It is interesting to talk to the veterans of World War II and Korea World War II in particular, because that was a war that everyone was in, you, you, mm -hmm. everyone did something. Mm -hmm. And yes. then you juxtapose that with Vietnam veterans who were fought in a hugely unpopular war, yeah. were, not, were not celebrated when they got home. And um, Lee, who's working on this show right now, is a Vietnam combat Marine. Okay. And uh, I am always intrigued by his stories. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, funny enough, we had some problems with a show one time, and I was embarrassed for Lee because the hosts weren't very professional. They drank a lot and swore a lot and told bad stories. And I said to Lee one time, is this embarrass you or make you upset? And he goes, no, after someone shot at me when I was 18 years old oh. in Vietnam, everything else is kind of pales in comparison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Lee has a – he goes up – Lee is – not a young guy. He goes up and cuts his mother-in-law's grass every weekend. Yeah. So, okay. He's, he's doing it. He's doing it. That's great. When, yes, I have am. you met many? <laughs> have you met many women who served? And I imagine their stories are a lot different. Yeah, most, most women that um I have met um a lot of them were medics. Uh, some of them served, but they didn't go over overseas to get deployed. Some of them. There, there have been some that have been deployed, but most of them, you know, were just stationed in a, at a base or something like that. But 
Yeah, there's some, like a, a lady I met yesterday in uh, New Mexico, she was a medic. And I believe she went over to the Gulf War or something like that. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. Those yep. stories, I can only imagine. Whew. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So your, what is the name of your foundation? Actually, what, what was it that got you started, first of all, in doing this in 2017? What was, what was your driving force? What made you decide to go and do these tours? Oh, the, the, the organization started in 2016, but uh, 2015, I was leaving school one day and I came across an elderly man outside mowing his lawn. So I pulled over and helped him out. And that night I just decided I'll start mowing free lawns for the elderly disabled single parents and veterans and one thing led to another it turned to an organization and then started having kids involved and giving back to their their community doing the same thing and here we are today now we, it's not just raising men now we also have raising women women as well so we're just trying to encourage both boys and girls to get out there and make a difference in their community with a lot more and we also include raking leaves and snow shoveling and even picking picking up trash mm. As part of the program now as well. So you actually have challenged, you've, you set a challenge out for kids and I love this that they as soon as they mow 50 lawns mm -hmm. you visit them correct? Yeah so I visit them with a brand new lawnmower weed eater and blower so that's called the 50 yard challenge. Every 10 lawns they get a different color shirt and when they sign up they make a sign saying I accept the 50 yard challenge and in return I'll uh, send them a white raising men or raising women's t-shirt along with shades and air protection and every 10 lawns they got a different color shirt and once they reach 50 I, I, I take them a brand new lawnmower weed eater and blower for finishing this challenge that's so awesome i love it i want my daughter to do it actually she's 12 well my son is eight and he really needs to do it but my daughter she's definitely <laughs> someone that that she helps me out so much with my foundation as well okay. and so i think that she would be she would be an awesome candidate for something like this because yes ma'am so good. It's no so young good. boy wants to ever mow the lawn. No, I, no he, mine doesn't. He helped me one day. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that was, my, my dad got us a, uh, he was the world's worst engineer with Chrysler Corporation. And he got us an electric lawnmower, you know, because it was just, we had the regular push one. Mm -hmm. I thought this was going to be great. I shocked myself so bad. Look what happened to me. I, <laughs> The idea of having electric lawnmowers, the oh, dumbest, man. having a long cord with a blade that spins, what could go right? right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, he was an engineer with, you saw what could go wrong. Yeah. He didn't invest. We are going to take a short break. When we come back, we've got a special treat we're going to show you. Uh -huh. You're listening and watching to Coffee Talk Tuesday. We'll be right back. In summer 2004, as a four-year-old Caleb's body emerged from an overcrowded water parks pool in Utah, every mother's worst nightmare became reality for Shalise Stevens. Would healing ever begin? Without an answer, she experienced truths about deep loss and grief's throttle. By age 40, she awakened to joy and motherhood. Finding 40, available on Amazon and wherever digital copies are sold. All right. Thank you so much for watching Coffee Talk Tuesday. We're back from break. My name is Shalee Stevens. I'm here with Trip Mitchell and our awesome guest, Rodney Smith Jr. And I have a surprise for you, Rodney. I Amazing. actually sent my boyfriend out because he was going to the store and I was like, you have to buy this particular thing. And he came back oh. with the last bag on the shelf of your smile lays with your <laughs> name on it yes ma'am and everything so i get to how first of all what oh. guy ever gets things right when they go to the grocery store i know right <laughs> I, I am i am over my life you know i can call and check but that now rodney how did this come about i don't know it's just um reached out i guess early early part of the year I think someone might have nominated might might have nominated me for it, and they just went through the processes that, that they had. 
and then they told me that I would be selected to be one of the people, one of 30 on their, on their bags. So they got 30 different people across the country that do, that are doing, you know, kind of good things in their communities and uh, we're all featured on bags. So some are featured on two, some are featured on three, some are featured on four, I believe. So, yeah. Yep, this one has the salt and vinegar one. Which are my favorites. Yeah. And, and so I'm giving this to, well, I don't know. My kids might be mad if they knew that I actually gave this to you. They're not going to watch. <laughs> yeah, no, just give it to me. We'll save it there. the studio. So. Yes, at the studio. And as Shalice walked in to do the show today, Roddy, um, yes. I was eating out of a huge bag of chips, and she brought yep. that in. And I, I was so appreciative because I was almost at the bottom. <laughs> and he's like he goes you got a good quality and i said you can't eat these yet <laughs> so she immediately went down who are some of the other people that inspire you when you go about doing this stuff you know people who've been giving and in in your life and maybe we've never heard of them but you have some stories about those type of people i mean people inspire me just like uh you know, first and foremost, you know, God you know, inspires me every day, but just listen to the motivational speakers, you know, that, that keeps me going a lot. That really keeps me inspired and wanting to give back, you know. Guys like Inky Johnson, and you got a guy named Eric Thomas, different motivational speakers that I listen to all the time while I'm on the road, because when I'm on the road, most of the time, you know, I don't listen to any music. Uh, most of the time, I'm just driving and just coming up with different ideas, and once in a while, I'll put on a podcast or listen to some of those guys talk. That's that's what I you know enjoy listening to, but yeah, you know, and just seeing I, people doing good stuff make inspires me. You know, it's funny is uh, I used to do that when I was commuting between Vegas and Salt Lake is listen to books on tape. Yeah, and they have wonderful speakers. And uh, I my business partner on the TV station, his nickname is Short Story Long, because <laughs> he can take a thirty second story and do it for a half an hour. He should oh, really wow. be. <laughs> but I was gonna say you did you learn from him? I learned from him. <laughs> and then our engineer was yeah could never say a nice thing about anyone. So I'm driving these guys back to Vegas and I got the book by Norman Vincent Peale, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the correct title. That is. Yeah. Dale and Carnegie. and I put that on Dale Carnegie. Dar Dale Carnegie. Thanks, Lee, for saving yeah. mine, because I knew it was wrong. Anyway, how to win friend, friends yes. and influence people. And I put that on the CD mm -hmm. to try to give these guys a little boost. They both fell asleep within a minute. Oh, oh man. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a motivational. Well, that's one of the reasons why we do what we do on Coffee I'm a Talk. motivational listener. Go ahead. I, <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> but one of the reasons why we do Coffee Talk is so we can highlight people in our community and then expanding to other communities that are making a difference and I love I love listening to motivational stuff especially in the morning first thing it's like just get up and go and I, I get all yeah. pumped up <laughs> oh yeah I, I'm news. with you and yes, you know in this digital age you can you can get access to people with some amazing stories and oh yeah yeah when you Everybody hear so close yeah yep. you know one of the challenges Rodney is if you watch tv at all Every commercial, you see people who are 25 and look amazingly fit. And they're running marathons and they're drinking beer and they're using beauty products and their lives are so perfect. They're driving great okay. cars. The world doesn't work that way. No, no it doesn't. And, no, it doesn't. you know, the rest of us all of a sudden are going, how come my life's not like that? And sometimes you have to listen to someone to get your head straight and exactly. tell you about real problems. Exactly. Well, and I I believe that most people too that that are doing great things, and I'm sure Rodney that you have a story of, of from your past as well. But most people that that do things that really put themselves out there have a story, mm -hmm. and they've had a lot of trials in their lives, and it hasn't just been all, you know, peaches and sunflowers. I don't know, yeah. it's so, so that seems like the analogy I needed to use. <laughs> peaches and sunflowers. <laughs> Rainbows and puppies. <laughs> So, Rodney, what, as you do this tour, how do you get up every morning? What motivates you? Uh, just, you know, just looking forward to hearing, hearing from a new veteran, you know, getting this story and sharing this story.
story that, that that motivates every every story is different every you know but what, the only thing that i find that's in common is that if you ask a combat veteran about their time overseas and if they will do it again and each of them would tell you you know i would do it again in a heartbeat no questions you know so you know, just hearing from people like that you know just motivates me and i think it's important to uh to highlight our veterans, you know, give them, give them the roses while they're here, you know, and so many people have served this country and haven't, you know, they, they just stay to themselves, but I think they should be celebrated. It's what they have done is so many, what they have done is given us our freedom and stuff like that. So I think it's important. It's, it's important to honor our veterans and, and recognize them while they're here. Well, it takes a lot of guts to go and, oh. and do that. I can't even... I, I, I remember when 9-11 happened and I was like, I'm going to join, I'm going to join the army. I'm going to join whatever I was going to join. I was all, I mean, I had a baby, so it wasn't really something that I, yeah. I was ready to do. But I mean, at that point I was, I was wanting to do it. And, but it, it takes a lot of, of courage. Oh, yeah. Oh, Corey, yeah. Man, yeah. Yeah, like one of the veterans I met the other day, he says he enlisted he, he was in the army. I think, I think he got out, and when was nine eleven happened, he went right back in. Yeah. He said, "I got to serve. It's time to serve. It's time to time to strap my boots up, and that's that's defend our country." So you know, it takes a lot for someone to you know put their country before their own. Like they could be doing whatever they want to. You know, they can could have run a different, but they decided to you know defend the country. Yeah. <clears throat> so I met a gentleman in. Mexico last week, who uh -huh. was in the Air Force, an academy graduate, retired from the Air Force, and now came back in, just like you were talking about. And he's now in Space Force, oh, wow. the newest branch of the military. And me being a smart aleck, <laughs> I said, have you seen the TV series Space Force, Steve Carell on Netflix? And he said, no, but I hear it's horrible. <laughs> and I didn't tell him it was yeah. very funny. So, and another thing, I've worked for a guy who was in the Coast Guard during the Vietnam conflict, and he served two tours on the river boats going up, which is some of the most dangerous combat in the whole Vietnam. I mean, just talk about sitting ducks. They do river patrol. And his story, while well, you don't think of the Coast Guard as being an active military, they certainly have an amazing role as well. And, and yeah. he had some unbelievable stories about stuff that but the vast majority of veterans i find rodney are very quiet when it comes to their heroism oh yeah they talk they to are. everyone yeah I, I find the same thing you know that a lot of them just just very humble very humble yeah well i i just i i love I love hearing all the stories. I love what you're doing. And I, what, what, how do people get a hold of you? How can people help support you and, and your, what you're doing and, and help make a difference? Ronnie, did you freeze up? Yeah, his, he, his signal froze. But what we'll do is we'll, stick up on the screen we'll get rodney's web website and phone number and what he's doing is amazing mm -hmm. really and awesome. uh, you know i could donate uh, i could find that old electric lawnmower oh yeah i'm sure people would love that <laughs> what a incredibly i remember i was standing one second we had a little hill in our backyard and i was mowing and the next second i am 20 feet away lying on my butt i literally got shocked and it you know, obviously it has only affected me for the subsequent period of time, but. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I have a battery lawnmower, which is pretty awesome, actually. It's light. I use it every day. Not every day. Every week. Friday. That's my lawn mowing days. I can't believe your daughter doesn't get up and mow lawns. She's in school. Do it after school. <laughs> does she really go to school? <laughs> She goes to school Monday through Thursday right now. She does have Fridays off, but get her out the lawn. I, I, yeah, it's just faster sometimes if I do it. And I mean, she does. So I have this. So my friend 
Rose that passed away last year, she had this thing with her kids where if they're going to school and they're doing their stuff, they're getting really good grades, as long as they're keeping their room clean and, you know, little things around the house. But she, that was their job. That was their biggest chore. And I've definitely adapted that with, with my kids too, because I think. There's something to be said for telling your kids not to get good grades. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't get good grades, you don't get into a good college. And good colleges are more expensive than bad ones. Right. So lower those expectations. You'll save a lot of money on college. <laughs> That's my tip for the week. Okay. Well, I think I'm being a good example since I'm getting good grades in school. And they get to see that. And they get to see mom doing just what they do. And then I go out and move along, too. So I'm, you see, have a, see? Well, it's nice to be back. Well, I'm glad to have you back, even though I do miss Chris now. Okay, well, Chris is in the next room, so we can see him. <laughs> thank you. All right, well, thank you. And all the information for Rodney will be up, how you can support him. And uh, if you see his salt and vinegar lays, I think there's another one, too, that he's on. But he's on the back there in his story and everything like that. It's just, it's really cool. So thank you, Rodney, for, for being on our show. And good luck in your adventure. And, and we'll see you back. next time. We'll see you next time. Yeah, I think he's coming back. Oh, he's coming back. No. We're going to have to edit this together. We'll just Hello. Yeah. Yeah, here he is. Hi. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. It's, I was going, I'm, I'm hitting civilization now. All right. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do, um, we'll bring it back and then we'll ask how do people get in touch with you, okay. website and all that stuff, okay? Go ahead, go ahead and do that. Yeah, yes, sir. All right. Well, welcome back. And Rodney is back with us. Rodney, how do people get in touch with you to support you and help you and donate electric lawnmowers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we we have a website at we have a website at weareraisingmen.com. Um, you can find us on social media, Raising Men Lawn Care Service. Um, you'll find myself on social media, Rodney Smith Jr. But that, that that's the way they can contact if they like to. Awesome. And, and what other Lay's bags besides the salt and vinegar are you on so people can keep an eye out for them? I'm on uh, original kettle cooked. I'm also on cheddar sour cream. Awesome. Never had that one. Never had it. Oh, no? Well, you're going to need to get that then. <laughs> okay. Hey, Roddy, thanks so much for being on the show. <laughs> I'm scared to try it. I'm scared to try it. <laughs> well, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, you get your exercise uh, as opposed to me. Well, I actually played hockey this morning. So. Oh, good. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there. Hey, Rodney, thanks so much for being on the show. You're a hell of a guy. We are lucky to have met you. Oh, thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. And when you're in Salt Lake next time, look us up and we'll go to coffee. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <All> right. Sounds <laughs> Thanks, Rodney. All Thank right. you so much Thank again. You. All right. Have All a right. great day. Bye-bye. You too.